Good evening, everyone. I know you've been sat through a lot of lectures, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. And I'm thankful to Ted and Esek for this honor to be presenting at this platform. If I choke, pardon me, because I'm a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> um, I think at some point in time, we all ask these questions in our life. What part do I play? What is my purpose in life? And most importantly, where, where do I fit in this life's puzzle? Now, if you don't fit in this life's puzzle, you're a black sheep. I, Mega Malagati, have been a black sheep. And yes, there are many puzzles in life, not just one. Some of them was I just forced into, maybe yes. Some of them, did I choose them to fit in? Let's see, shall we? The first puzzle, childhood. Of course, this is something that you don't choose, you're kind of forced in. That little girl in the red dress is me from our village. And as you know, in India, we love to reproduce like bunnies. So our families are very, very large. And especially when a child is born in a village, if it's a girl and dark, it's not a good sign. So I was born and quickly I got the name Karapi, which is in my mother tongue. I'm not going to give language uh, lessons today, which means dark skinned. And my sister got the name Kempi, meaning red cheeks. So I instantly knew that, well, I was the black sheep of the family. I remember at age five, because this is pretty much when you start remembering as a child perfectly. Unfortunately, this is the dark side of India. Um, apart from all the beautiful things that we know about the country, I was abused sexually by my own uncle at home for many, many years. I did go to my mom and I tell, told her, I'm sorry, I can't handle this anymore. She herself was going through a lot in her life. Her family, her in-laws, her husband, my father, were ill-treating her. So she took out the entire anger on me, saying that I was abusing it, which I couldn't understand why at that time. And at around this age, at the age of 10, I stumbled upon a TV show uh, not a TV show, but it's the biggest beauty pageant in the world called Miss Universe and Miss World. I'm sure everybody's aware of it. I looked at it. I was totally in awe of it and I started dreaming and I wanted to be in that world. So years passed, the schooling got over, um, came to a city, did my pre-university uh, from a village, moved into a smaller city. And before you start your graduation course in India, it's around 19 years old, I went to my parents and asked them, well, can I go to Mumbai and join a fashion institute? So coming from a South Indian conservative family, my parents replied, well, fashion is for prostitutes. So now you're aware in India, all of us, either we are engineers or doctors. So I had no other choice but to choose engineering. But I did try to lose a year in between and join the Fashion Institute. However, my parents said, well, uh, either you get married or you finish engineering. My proposals were starting to come since I was 17 years old. And I was already considered old to get married. However, I said, no marriage, I will finish engineering and moved into working environment as a working woman. However, at age 23, which was too old by the time in India for me, I had to get married, so I did. Now, you guys are all very, very young. You have a long way to go in a married life, you know. Uh, some of them, I think two or three of them who have the experience or probably a handful of 10 who have had experience in marriages can support saying that either marriage sometimes is with soulmates or cellmates. 
So, let's see who did I end up with in puzzle number two, marriage. Well, um, I married a very, very well-educated lawyer in India who ticked all the boxes and coming from a high caste. And I come from something called as an outcast, called the Dalit, the untouchables, formerly known as the untouchables, Les Artu Shavlin. For those who are not aware of this community, you have a pyramid, as you see on the screen, of the god. At the top of the head, you have the higher caste, then you go down to the lower caste. Now, where do the outcasts fall into? They fall outside the pyramid. And the Dalits, we, my ancestors basically, were confined in an area for centuries. We were not allowed to look or touch any of the upper caste people for centuries. However, after independence, things improved. There was a change. However, there's a very, very long way to go. Now, coming back to my marriage, my professional life was going great. However, my marriage suffered. So I ended up with a cellmate, not a soulmate. And the reason was I discovered he was very abusive and a drug addict. So I was abused physically again, sexually, mentally, verbally, in every way possible from him. And there was no escape, sometimes even drugged to adhere to his lifestyle. After six years of staying in this marriage, I said enough's enough because it's unbearable. I need to break free. But it was not allowed in India at that time. I had no choice but to stay married. So what did I do? I asked two questions to myself. When I'm age 40, do I want to be married and unhappy? Or do I want to be happily single? I chose the later. And for this, I needed a lot of courage to make the big change. And of course, you know, after one year later, I did get divorced after coming here to ESSEC. Um, and that was a change that I made. So let's see, to activate this new change, what did I do? During that time, um, I would say my professional job was also not going great. So from all angles, I was kind of feeling down. And one thing came to me, to my mind, when Henry Ford said, when everything is going against you, always remember that the flight takes off against the wind, not with it. And what did I do? I took off. How did I take off? Well, I'm a very curious person and a social person. Uh, staying in Bangalore when I was 29 at that time, I met quite a few French people in Bangalore and we started talking and one of them asked me a very important question. What was your dream when you were a child? And this triggered me, of course, the 10 year old who thought of being in a fashion industry. So I said, this is it. He was like, have you heard about ESSEC, the luxury MBA? I think you should look into it. I said, sure, what is luxury? Because I had no idea what luxury was. And he started explaining the brands like Dior, Xenia, Burberry, etc. I went, did the store check, fell in love with the brands, quit my job in engineering, took up a very low-end salesperson job in a multi-brand luxury store in Bangalore, and wanted to experience how it feels working in this area and I loved every bit of it. So I applied to ESSEC, and the most important thing after applying is to be connected with the right people in the industry to know about these things, to know about the depths of what you're getting into. And that's what I did. Gave my interviews, got accepted, and I was ready to take off. Now, for the fourth puzzle that I chose, which is the new me, what did I do? 
to define my, redefine myself, actually. Five days before I left Bangalore, I told my father, I'm leaving, I'm not coming back. And he hesitated, but accepted and said, okay, you can leave. When I left, I was cut off completely from the family. I remember having one euro a day when I came to Paris to live for many months together because I came to Paris with one suitcase after selling pretty much everything I had, investing in my new future. So in this country, coming with completely unknown territory, very new to Europe, not knowing the language, not knowing the people, changing careers and reinventing myself. Whew, that was a lot of change at the same time, you know, but very exciting for me. And since I did not have so much money, I used to borrow bread from my classmates and eat it for dinner with my pasta, butter and salt. It took a very long time after that for me to like pasta, by the way. And, um, but then it was a do or die situation for me. I could not go back to India because if I went back, I would lose my own faith. This was a time when I needed conviction to be strong enough and to not break down. Standing here, I'm very proud because this is a school that opened new possibilities to me when I came to France. I met a lot of industry leaders, made new mentors, and finally, the sun started to shine upon me. I got my first job at Esté Dupont, which is a family luxury maison in France, and learned, started learning luxury marketing, sales, traveled from US to Japan, and really had fun for the first time ever in the work I did. After this, for almost eight years, I wanted to move into a bigger structure, hence now I work at L'Oreal which is another fantastic brand to work for. After changing countries, after moving places, I think I have learned and I'm living the dream of French art de vivre. I cannot thank enough to France because it completely opened its arms and welcomed me and having good conversations with very good friends, learning about the history, heritage of France and Europe, tasting delicious food and cuisines around, and not to forget the wine and champagne. So for the last 12 years, I have been tasting stars, and I hope I continue to do so. I think now I can say that I have rebuilt my life with the work professionally and my personal life to do what I love, what I really, really love. I think um, there were four things which you've already seen in the presentation that have helped me to really reinvent myself. They are courage, curiosity, connection and conviction. These were the four life-changing seas for me to what I am today. So it really humbles me today when I look back into my roots and to see where I stand today that I am in front of you. I'd really like to thank all the people for the last almost 41 years that have helped me in a positive way or a negative way to become who I am. As right now the famous rock band Imagine Dragons say, you made me a believer. So, as of today, um, I think after a lot of fight back in India, I've opened a foundation called From Untouchable to Unstoppable that helps women in two ways. One, to give free education to the little young girls in India who come from the Dalit community or the socially, economically challenged communities, and two, to help women who have been abused in prostitution 
and are actually thrown in the road at the age of 30 or 35 years old. And we seek to give them a second life and an identity. So hopefully, we get successful in doing this one. Now, um, to humbly say, I hope I keep learning and contributing. And I would like to end this talk on a couple of notes. One, oh, that's the foundation, by the way. Nothing is stronger than a woman who has built her foundation with the bricks that others have thrown at her. And as Andre says, the top of a mountain is the bottom of the next. So keep climbing. And I wish you all can find or keep finding your puzzles in life. Thank you.